Today we're going to show you 10 very interesting facts about the legendary rock band The Who. Let's get into it. Drummer Keith Moon was a prankster, and he was explosive. Literally, he liked to blow things up, and no destruction pleased him more than to make toilets explode. It was his favorite. His fascination with pyrotechnics began in 1965 when he purchased a case of 500 cherry bombs. Moon quickly escalated from cherry bombs to M80 fireworks, and then his explosive of choice was simply dynamite. Keith says, All that porcelain flying through the air was quite unforgettable. I never realized dynamite was so powerful. The destruction not only mesmerized him, but created him a public image as rock's premier hellraiser. One instance of toilet bowl destruction is when guitarist Pete Townsend saw that Moon had turned one into absolute dust. When Pete inquired as to why the toilet needed exploding, Moon showed him a case of cherry bombs, gleefully. Townsend says, And of course, from that moment on, we got thrown out of every hotel we ever stayed in. They were loud, like Guinness World Record loud. On May 31st, 1976, The Who's concert in London was so loud that the Guinness World Record was created for them. Of course, by now, it has been beaten several times with modern technology, but it's pretty remarkable to be the first band to have that accolade. And just so you know, Guinness World Record stopped listing this record as venues were increasing their volume in hopes of getting it and causing damage to their audiences. Before they were the Who, they were known as the High Numbers. And as chance would have it, when the Beatles were making an appearance at Blackpool's Opera House, they opened for the most popular band in the world, along with the Kinks. Funny enough, while we're on the subject of the Beatles, Pete Townsend had some interesting things to say about the lads from Liverpool. He says he and Paul McCartney, for instance, have two different perspectives on what is rock and roll, saying, you know, I could sit down and have a conversation with Paul about rock and roll, and we'd be talking about two different things. To me, rock was the Rolling Stones, and before that, Chuck Berry, and before that, maybe a few people who lived in the fields in Louisiana. But I can't really include the Beatles in that. The Beatles were over with Herman's Hermits. That's not rock and roll. They were such a big pop phenomenon, light music with occasional masterpieces thrown in. No, of course, I have a different perspective on this. However, it's interesting that the debate of what exactly is rock and roll was being had so long ago. Speaking of the Beatles, on the night that Keith Moon tragically died, he had been at a party Paul was throwing. On September 9th, Paul threw a party at the Covent Garden Diner Peppermint Park to celebrate what would have been Buddy Holly's 42nd birthday. Paul had acquired the right to Buddy Holly's song publishing. Moon initially didn't want to go to Paul's party, but his girlfriend said she would go without him, and he changed his mind. Not without re-upping his drug supply from his dealer. Keith was trying to cut back on his alcohol consumption, and everyone at the party, including Paul McCartney, said he looked in great spirits. They left Paul's party to view the premiere of the Buddy Holly story at the Ocean Cinema. Keith wanted to leave an hour into the film. He and his girlfriend went home and he began to take his pills, one of which was designed to help him kick drinking, called heminephrine. He was trying, but he had an addictive personality and abused it just like every other drug he used. After they fell asleep, his girlfriend Annette found him motionless on the floor the next afternoon. He was pronounced dead a few hours later at the hospital. The Who made headlines for an absolute concert disaster on December 3, 1979 in Cincinnati. It was just a mess. People were originally told through a radio station that general admission ticket holders would be admitted at 3 p.m., so obviously a massive crowd formed by 5 p.m. Although all the doors were expected to be open simultaneously, only a pair of doors at the far right of the main entrance were opened. As the people entered the stadium through just those two doors, people who were originally in front of the line started pushing and pushing. Then, around 7.15 p.m., it all goes downhill. Perhaps there was a late sound check, or maybe even the audio from The Who's movie, Quadrophenia. But whatever it was, the crowd assumed The Who was performing earlier than originally planned, and they went mad. They surged towards the two doors, and many people were trampled. Eleven people lost their lives that day. The Who played the concert unaware of the tragedy. The next day, at a concert in Buffalo, New York, Roger Daltrey told the crowd, We lost a lot of family last night. This show's for them. During a Who concert on May 16, 1969, at New York City Fillmore East, a man rushed the stage and tried to take the microphone. Roger Daltrey punched him in the face and Pete Townsend kicked him in the crotch. Turns out, the man was actually a plainclothes policeman who was trying to warn them that the grocery store next door was on fire. Pete Townsend was later arrested. You never really hear this one often, do you? 
Well, the Who absolutely hated Woodstock, especially Roger Daltrey. He says, very eloquently I might add, three days of peace and love? Do me a favor. It was crazy even before we arrived. Pete spent several hours in traffic jams. Other artists didn't make it at all. The whole place was chaos. Looking out onto the pre-dawn of gloom of Woodstock, making out the vague shape of half a million mud cake people as the light swept over them, I felt in my sleep-deprived, hallucinating state that this was my nightmare come true. The monitors kept breaking, the sound was shit, we were all battling the elements and ourselves. The band went through a few name changes before settling on The Who. First, they were The Detours, a skiffle band. Then, when Roger Daltrey took over as lead vocalist and Pete Townsend was added on on guitar, their music became more rock and roll slash R&B. In 1964, one of Pete's friends suggested that they change the band's name to The Who when they took on Keith Moon. However, their publicist who turned them into a mod band named them The High Numbers. But since their debut album was a flop, they switched it back to The Who. In a strange scrap, Roger Daltrey was actually kicked out of the band for a moment, but Roger was trying to do the right thing, it seems. When Keith Moon supplied illegal drugs to bandmates John Entwistle and Pete Townsend, Daltrey was pissed, so he took the drugs and flushed them down the toilet. Jeez, what is it with these guys on toilets? Anyway, he flushed them and then proceeded to beat up Keith Moon. So they kicked him out for a bit, but he soon returned. It's so interesting all of these bands from that era had a fascination with Eastern religion and philosophy. The Beatles had the Maharishi and the Who had Meher Baba. Meher was a spiritual leader and a huge influence on Pete Townsend. His teaching inspired the title for Baba O'Reilly and Pete dedicated Tommy to him. Well, that's it for today everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.